Some lost parts of the indigenous languages have been restored in the past decade, but more work needs to be done. The Democratic Progressive Party, during its eight years of rule in Taiwan, had launched various programs in a bid to revive the languages. Other than several language programs, bonus points are also offered to students who pass the indigenous language proficiency assessment test. All these measures are aimed at reviving the indigenous languages. However, for some students, learning and speaking the languages, which is the essence of their culture, has on the contrary become an additional burden since they are already under pressure from Taiwan's tough examination systems for academic advancement. Many parents doubt what is good for the kids' future to relearn the indigenous language. They think that English is probably more useful when their children go abroad and that there is little chance they will use their indigenous language. People with a weaker sense of ethnic identity will probably gain the value of learning their own language. They think it's not important. Some children ask their teachers, why should I learn my mother language? When I go to McDonald's, I can't use it. The job market is very competitive, so many parents wonder if their children are spending too much time learning their own language on top of English. Take my children, for example. Their mom is Amis, their dad is Taiwan, but we all speak in Mandarin. What I think is that my children need English in the future. As for the indigenous languages, we try our best to teach them whenever we can. We didn't really use any special approach to force them to learn the language. Environment is a major element in language learning. An indigenous language will become a part of a person's life in a natural way if he is provided an environment to speak it. So, in addition to pushing various language programs, many people are working on ways to make the indigenous language a part of family life. Perhaps that's the magic potion to revive indigenous languages. The environments are different. In the past, people lived in the communities and learned their own language in a natural way in the environment. They did not need anybody to teach them. When people lived together in a community, they got to learn the same language. Now things have changed. The children's books are in Chinese characters and no one thinks about translating them into Ataya. The environment is a major element in learning. Currently, the government is making efforts to promote indigenous languages to prevent them from disappearing. But the government and people are trying to restore the parts lost in the past decades. This is not just to preserve the languages, but also to safeguard the lifeline of the indigenous peoples and their cultures. Culture and language are like parts of the same web. Without language, the culture will slowly vanish. Just like that. People are not aware of that. It's like the language is a decoration that they just put it there and say that's a Tayal culture. Will it be like this in the future? Yes, definitely. But the two can't be disconnected. If language is gone, the culture will fade, become old and vanish like death. Now it's old, no one wants it. It's discarded like rubbish. Language and culture are entwined. Both the government and communities need to think about the purpose of learning indigenous languages. Is it to develop a skill or is it a mission? Many parents do not let their children learn their mother tongues in order to avoid adding an extra burden on them. They prefer to have their children spend time learning other skills that can make them more competitive. However, without family efforts and language learning, any promotional programs might still be futile. DITV Weekly.